Um, today uh, is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24, the King James Version. I pray that you would set aside, as I know you do, uh, some time for your personal devotion of prayer and scripture reading, and devotion time. Uh, this particular devotion, you might want to start in chapter 5. And, um, time this week and read into 7 because it takes in the whole consideration of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and uh, so today we're going to look at the, the parable that Jesus spoke at the end of that message. Uh, once again, we declare that the Word of God is holy and righteous. Would you stand all the building, even the balcony, if you'll stand with us as we reverence this time and welcome you all to the service. If you can't stand, would you stand with us today? Uh, we're reading again in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. And it reads, Therefore, whosoever, Jesus says, heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded, you see, upon a rock. 26. Jesus says that everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and Jesus asked the commentary, and great was the fall of it. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, yes. the people were astonished at his doctrine. Uh -huh. For he taught them as one having authority Amen. and not as the scribes. Yes. The Lord had a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and you know to the doers of his holy Amen. word. Shall I ask for a moment, kind Father, God, our God. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We are made glad and celebrate you in your presence. We pray, Father, for God, that in these next few moments you would might allow us to decrease that your holy presence in this capacity here might increase. Help us once again to be moved from this world of toil and distraction and be able to ascend to that celestial seat that we might sit together with you in heavenly places. Oh God, we desire to experience an uninterrupted dialogue, communion with you, that there be nothing between our souls and our Savior. Pray, God, that as we enter into this time, that you would meet us here and allow your holy angels, healing spirits of God to descend upon this place, touching our bodies, our minds, healing for our emotions, even for our relationships. We pray if there be anyone who has entered this fellowship and does not know you as Savior, you might convict them of sin while convincing them of so great salvation. We pray that those of us who gathered here who are along the way, all our way to heaven, God, you might speak a word of courage and time, power for those who grow grown faint, that we might be made mighty through you. We ask this blessing that your word continues to be a light unto our path. We have light on our way in dark places that it might illuminate your will and your way and your word. We ask this blessing on all others in the strong name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. unto you. Back to 2 and 20 tells us the Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth keeps silence before him. Uh, we want to really thank God once again for uh, your patience with us. Uh, we did have it, like I said, it was a, a matter that really came against our heart to, to shut down Sunday. Uh, but we didn't want you having to struggle and be in harm's way. Amen. Thank God that you made it. Tell your neighbor. Oh, you talk. 
talk to your neighbor. If you don't like it, move. Say neighbor. But I'm here now. Definitely a bonus. Um, you might have noticed that from time to time uh, in my preaching, I use a lot of stories, uh, illustrations. Uh -huh. um, sometimes I think folks forget the sermon, but remember the story. I guess uh -huh. that's okay. Uh, because the stories often carries the essence of uh, the word, and somehow it allows us to get the jet, you see of what the message is, is all about. Well, uh, having said that, that method of preaching or teaching is nothing new but ancient in its origin. Because Jesus, the master teacher, used such stories or illustrations. The Bible refers to them as parables. Uh, you might remember that a parable is an earthly story that has heavenly meaning. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Morning service, and y'all know it's warm now. Y'all keep the fire stoked. All right, all right. All right, all right. Uh, and so, Jesus often would use common, you know, everyday things in order to teach them things they did not understand. And he taught it in a way that the Spirit of God would give them an understanding. And for those who were not spiritual minded, they couldn't grasp it. And it was somehow in the mystery of the Spirit, even now, that he didn't have an ear. They can hear what the Spirit, you know, said to the church. Yes. Uh, and so, in this particular passage, there is the parable we call the parable of the two builders. Now, uh, this particular parable is not as famous, you know, as the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, it may not be as well known as the parable of the soul. Uh -huh. uh, but it is special because it is strategically placed. Uh, it comes on the end of the greatest sermon ever preached. Mm -hmm. It is the sermon Jesus preached that we call the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Yeah. And what it does, it begins to summarize and to really categorize all of the essence of what Jesus has said. That's why he says, he that has heard these sayings of mine. Yes. And he says to them, if you hear them, I'm going to liken you to a wise man because if you hear them and you do something about it, uh, then I'm going to call you wise. If yeah. you hear them and you don't do anything about it, then I'm going to call you foolish. Yes. Uh -huh. I want to talk to you this morning. This was for last Sunday, but since you waited to this Sunday, I'm going to give you a little left over. I'm going to warm it up for you. All right. All right. All right. Okay, baby. I want to talk about how to build a successful life in 2014. Yes, come on. How to build a successful life in 2014. Now, I think we need to take a moment to make sure that we all have a similar definition of success. Okay. Because the world has spun that word in so many directions that uh, success means a mirror of things to a mirror of people. Yes. Uh, for some folks, success means to have a fat water of hundreds that can choke a horse. That's, that's success. And others is to have all the bling and rings on every finger. And, and uh, listen, that's success for some folks to have uh, wheels on the car that cost more than the car. Yeah. The car get told when you can't get the wheels paid for. Y'all say it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for some folks, success means to just have something bigger than what you have. That's yeah. successful. Uh, whether it's a house or car, some folks think if I can just get that corner office, if I can just scale the heights uh, in my employer's eyes and become somebody uh, that is important and someone who has influence and prestige, that that would be successful. But I submit to you that if you look at everything you have uh, that money cannot buy and death cannot take away, yes. that's all you have. All right. And when you look at everything that money cannot buy and death cannot take away, whatever you have left, that makes you successful. All right. All right. Jesus said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and then really lose his soul? What shall a man give in return or exchange for his soul? Right. So success for the Christian is to hear Jesus say, well done. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Nothing, nothing's wrong with having some luxuries and having some final things in life. But remember, your goal is never to be the richest person in the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. Right, man. Yeah. Yes, so, 
Jesus says for us that there are some things that we ought to consider as we build our life, if we want to build a life that is successful. Uh -huh. My pastor would say this story when he preached this text. He would say that two men were standing in line downtown waiting to buy permits to start their building. And as they waited to see the clerk, they began to dialogue with each other. Uh -huh. And they determined after some conversation that they were indeed both building their homes. And not only that, their homes were adjacent to one another. They were about to become neighbors. Yeah. So they shook hands and they were elated at the opportunity to be neighbors together and to work on such a new and a wonderful project. Uh -huh. uh, they showed the clerk uh, their plans and the architect had stacked their drawings. And they were given, they paid the fee and were given their permit. And they showed up on the site the next morning. Uh, builder number one showed up with a crew of people he had all of his lumber, he had the truss for the roof, he had the nails, he had even the cement truck waiting. And he began to dig a while, and then he framed up his foundation, poured his cement, and waited for it to dry. And a few days later, he began building the wall, while building number two showed up with just some shovels, uh -huh. and started digging. But number one, after a while, was able to get his roof on, and they were putting up the truss, and even getting some of the shingles in place, and building number two just kept digging. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after a while, the number one was able to start on his interior walls and to close up the exterior, to even add a side, he was putting the windows in the doors, the number two, in a hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But number one, after a while, called in all the mechanical drawings and they began to put the plumbing in and the electrical began to go in and even the flooring and, and they began to drywall and mud and tape. Number two, kept on digging. Come on, come on. Yeah, after a while, the number two's wife came down to see how things were going on, and she was hiding. Said, Man, what, what are you doing? People across the street, they get ready to have an open house. They have a house woman tonight. This is embarrassing. Do you know what you, if you, why don't you hire somebody? I told you don't be your own country. You don't know what you, they already built that house. Look, look, real estate is in front of the house over there. <laughs> I'm not coming down here, no. Embarrassing. And while she was really going off, and all of a sudden her husband said, Wait a minute. I hear something. Well, baby, I think I found what I was looking for. And he began to, to find that there was a rock there. He cleared it off and he began to build his house. His first night in his new home, a storm came. And the rain was torrential. And the rain came down so heavy into the flood. And the waves began to blow a hurricane force. And the middle of the night, number two's wife jumped up screaming and hollering, Baby! Baby, come to the window! The house across the street is falling over! Uh, yeah. Stay in the bed. Come on, come on. And that morning when he got up, he found his house was still intact. Yeah, oh, yeah. Because he built his house, you see, on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> In order to be successful in 2014, Jesus said there are several spiritual lessons that the life builder needs to know. You're a life builder. Some of y'all are trying to make a living, but you need to make a life first. Amen. There's more to, to making a life than paying mortgages and light bills, garbage bills, you know, and then you die. Uh -huh. you see, more. And so some of you have tried so hard at making a living because you have no experience in how to make a life. Yes, yes. You're going out to goals and you word God so. I don't know, the Lord sometimes need a vacation for some of us. <laughs> the word God said about where you're trying to get to, and God said, I'm trying to bless you on the way. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times the work that God does for you is not when you arrive at your blessing. Right, right. The work that God does for us is in the journey to the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Israel became the nation not after they got to Canaan, but on the way in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's through the struggle yeah. that you become a better person. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, if you're going to be 
successful. No, this you got to know that everybody, everybody, everybody is a life builder. Uh -huh. Everybody is building on something right now. And the question is, Jesus wants you to consider what it is you're building on, because we're surrounded with people that really uh, try to build their lives on anything. Any kind of foundation. Some folks want to build their lives on their social status. Uh -huh. You 38 years old trying to pledge for a frat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you gotta take that leave before the show starts. <laughs> <laughs> social status. <laughs> Some people right now have, are wearing clothes. That they still paying for on their credit card. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to impress folks that you really don't even like. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So someone's building their life on that. Some some young folks right now are building their life on the weekend. Yeah. Some old folks too. Yeah. You don't know you don't know how you're gonna pay your bills next week, but you know what you're gonna wear that party tomorrow night. They it out, the whole outfit. Yeah. Some of us build their life on, on trying to impress others the social status. Others build their life on their finances. You got folks that they eat being the sausages for weeks. Uh -huh. Robbing God and stacking their money. Listen, trying to save money so somebody else can spend it for them. Amen. Yeah. They build their life around to be secure in their savings account. Amen. Some folks build their life on their friends. Others, you know, build their life on even a physical appearance. Uh -huh. Some of oh, y'all, you got so much stuff tied up around you right now. It's a wonder, it's a wonder you can breathe through your nose. Amen. <laughs> Creams and gadgets and trying to press the wrinkles behind your ear. <laughs> Some brothers right now holding that stuff again right now. You can't agree. Let that out, bro. We know all the six pack you got in the refrigerator. Yeah. Of your development, sister. For 
don't choose you as their friend. You choose your own friend. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't choose to hang with me. I got other things to do besides hanging with you. Right. Especially if you ain't going nowhere. Right. Yeah. 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 And you see, at a certain age in your growth in 2014, you're too old to talk about oops. My bad, snap. It's all the words. Too foolish. You're old enough now, if you didn't mean to do it, you better act like you meant to do it. And so, he says, everybody is, because both of the men were building. You have to understand that when you are healthy, you will desire greater. Yes. If you're mentally healthy, if you're not going to a funk of depression, if you're not swinging on the manic swings, then you have to have a God in you that says greater. You can bear, I, I, I'm getting the young folk in here. This is the young folk. You can be working at hard and working at McDonald's, flipping right. hamburgers, and something inside of you will say greater. Right. I wish I had a You can be a single mother. They got three kids in the back of it at one time, and some inside of you will say, Greater! You can be on a job doing the best you can do, and no one even acknowledges the effort you're putting in, and besides feeling sorry for yourself, some can minister to you and say, Baby, this ain't all God has for you. Greater! And so they, they were building, bro. I wish I had some pills. Yeah. They say those people who were born before 1960 are pills. Yeah. When they join your church, they come to pills. Yeah. They don't come to church to see what they get, what kind of hand out they got. They come to recognize there's the work to be done. If the Lord needs somebody, here I send me. Thank God for the spirit of building. Don't you know that if it wasn't for that spirit, we, we, we would be in a terrible place. Amen. Somebody, your granddaddy, your grandma, I don't care how crazy they were, somebody said greater. Amen. And they left this city. Yeah. Somebody said greater. Yeah. And came out of Alabama and said, oh, y'all gonna pay with me. Somebody said greater. And got out the cotton field talking about greater. Yes, they did. You get here now, you act like you don't understand greater. You waiting for a welfare check. Mm -hmm. I wish I had some help. Man, because you got on the for four years and they cut it off. All right. All right now. I hear God telling somebody right where you are. Greater than your neighbor, neighbor. Greater, greater. Speak it into their spirit. Tell them greater. Greater is he that's in you. Greater. Greater things that you do. Because I go to my father. Greater. Good Lord. 
Hold on, hand, whatever. The reality, you would agree that this parable is really all about obedience, isn't it? Yes, yes. The Bible said that hearing is important. Paul asked at least three questions about hearing in Romans. He says, how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? Question number one. How should they believe in whom they have not heard? Question number two. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Question number three. How shall he preach except he be sent? Question number four. So hearing is important. Amen. Let me read. Yeah. But now the interesting thing is the two folks can sit in the same church, hear the same message, and respond totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody hears it and they are convicted, they repent, they confess, they're delivered, they're set free. And someone else goes into spiritual paralysis and every sermon they hear about somebody else's needs. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm so sorry to tell some of you all that this church is not going to work for you or nobody's church will work for you because... You don't come for anybody else. You, you come just for to see what everybody else needs. Uh -huh. You pick up everybody else's groceries and never do your own shop. Amen. Yep, yep, yep. Somebody say amen. amen. And so understand that everybody is a building. Mm -hmm. The question is to you today to determine what it is, what it is that you're building on. Mm -hmm. Whose word are you standing on? Number two, if you're going to build, and you build it anyway, Everybody's a builder, then you have to build your life with storms in mind. Yes. Say that. Yes. The Bible says, the rain. It didn't say rain, it said the rains came. Mm -hmm. yeah. Saying that there was a particular storm that came to that house, the rain. Yeah. The floods, the winds blew. And somebody right now, you are not really moved by this message because. Uh, right now you're you're in a peaceful place, you know. A little sunlight. The last time this time last week you couldn't have to drive when you had four feet of snow. My little dog went outside to use a restroom and got lost. <laughs> and it was too cold for me to go and look for. Oh my God be with you. It means to release, 
unclean. And some storms have a cleaning property. Yes. Some storms have a way of removing everything that's not standing on nothing. Some storms come into your life to remove some stuff around you, some folk around you that ain't standing on nothing. And to have you make sure that your feet are planted on something sturdy. Are y'all with me? And really, uh, a good Christian ought to be, spiritually speaking, ambidextrous. I had a brother that was ambidextrous. He, was, he could write as well with his left hand as he could with his right hand. He was ambidextrous. He could use both hands equally. And um, a Christian ought to be ambidextrous. You know, they were to hold troubles in one hand and then hold blessings in another and coexist. I wish you, in other words, blessings ought not to blindside you and troubles ought not to trip you up. You ought to be able to hold blessings in one hand and troubles in another. And you know what you say to yourself? For we know that, that, that all things work together, put together somehow for the good of them that love the Lord and our Real 
His problem was all he wanted was the house. The kid wasn't was built on. Yeah. You know, you want to know, uh, what's this sad? It's because it is, oh, are you a child? Oh, no. I don't have a parents. What's this sad? Is that sad he got a job? Yes, 
success. Are y'all paying me a while? Yes, 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 yes. He had been so successful, even the neighbors had become envious of him. It looked like he had a Midas touch. It looked like all he could do was win. He felt good about his accomplishments. But he was concerned that the bounty was so great and so prevalent that he said, I don't have no way to put all of my success. So he had a brainstorm. Self told him, here's what you're going to do. Go and get you some builders together. And get you a crew for demolition. Yeah. Tear down these old barns that are too small to service your success. Yeah. And then go ahead and build greater. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. you can build greater. Yeah. He built greater, and then he threw himself at retirement party. Told himself, well, you can eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got enough to last you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Lay back and say, soul, take your rest. Yeah. But then God intervened in his success story yeah. and called him something. That bothered me. Yeah. He said, I fool this night. Yeah. Is your soul required of me? Yeah. Then whom should all these things belong to? Yeah. And I offered myself well as a builder myself. Yeah. Yeah. Why would it be such a bad thing to build? And they raped her. And they thought they had killed. 
Yeah. <laughs>